G'day guys, how you going? It's Iski here, and today is a really, really exciting day for me. It's the first video, basically, of my home cinema build. And uh, I thought today we would start off with something simple. We would kind of do the sofas. You know, the, the nice boxing that you see around a lot of home cinemas that go around the perimeter. I thought I'd basically start that but uh, as you can see, I've already started it, but I'm, I'm hoping that we can, you know, get a bit further on. Um, I'm thinking, hopefully in this video at least, I mean, with these videos, there's no set agenda. That's what I'll let you know now. Um, I'll just do as much as I want. I'll finish the video and I'll start it up somewhere at the next video, you know. So what I thought I'd do today is basically try to get this framed up. You can see I've done some framing at all the corners. And uh, that's basically so I can set up some string lines, like you see there. And that will make it a lot easier to fill in the gaps. And uh, yeah, the coolest part with this cinema, like I've said in the past, is I'm going to be getting all of, my, all of my equipment. Really good equipment. Don't think it's going to be crap because it comes from the dump. But I'm going to be getting all of my equipment for free at the dump. I'm going to try and fix stuff um, or just use stuff that I find that people don't want anymore. But it's not just equipment, it is also um, timbers. Or a lot of my building materials, not all of them, I think when this build is done, I'll probably get, I'll probably use maybe, I don't know, a third of the building materials will probably be sourced at the dump for free. We're talking this framing pine and flooring and so forth. But uh, that's the whole idea. Um, we'll try to keep it our costs down, but we should hopefully have a really cool, um, cinema at the end. Now if I pull back here, check this out, you can see that's a massive beam. That's the, basically a massive beam. We're actually building this cinema underneath a, a big deck that I basically built a few years ago and that deck required that massive beam. If I didn't want posts in here, they, want, they had said I had to have this big beam, which was fine. I asked him if he could offset it so it wasn't in the center of the room and he did. He said that was fine. And yeah, so we're going to be basically hiding that beam inside the sofa. So if I stand back here and I stick a photo of what I want that to end up looking like at the end of this build, you can see, hopefully, <laughs> we'll get to that stage. It should be really good. I can't wait. But uh, we'll get some nice lighting and starfield ceilings and all of that kind of stuff happening as well. Now, I guess let's just go outside. And I'll show you what I've got to start with. I'll show you my little timber stash because I have been finding all this timber um, at the dump in the last six months, six to 12 months. I've been picking up pieces every now and then. I'll show you now. By the way, this heater that you see, see sitting there, I wouldn't turn it on underneath that shade cloth. I just found that at the dump, this heater, and uh, I thought one day I might want a heater like that. And uh, I haven't even tested it out. I'm sure it works though. But if we come over here, there we go, look at all of that. That's, um, that all came from the dump. And the majority of this stuff is brand new. There's some used pieces in there, but I don't even care if they're new used pieces, as long as they're straight, as long as they're treated. Um, <laughs> that's all that matters really, doesn't it? Um, they've been sitting out here, a lot of these have been sitting out here for months and months, so they've kind of discolored a bit, but who cares about that, you never see them. But um, that's, that's my timber stash. Now the other thing that I haven't mentioned yet is not just the timbers I want to get for, well as much building materials I want to get for free, not just the equipment that I want to get 100% for free, but I also want to use tools to build this thing that I find at the dump as well. And if we set you down here, we'll probably do all our cutting on this small deck that I built. You can actually see all the timbers down here, like all of that frame, all that stuff there that came from the dump to build this deck uh the decking boards i bought <laughs> for, for brand new but oh you should have seen this when i put it down it looks sensational but i just never end up painting it but i'll end up i'll get through it i've actually got a video of me um, getting decking oils from the dump for free that i'll end up fixing this up but um yeah this this whole deck was um built on foundations that were found at the dump but if i point you to this and I, this is actually a swimming pool filter that th someone threw out. They kindly cut it in half and I thought that would make a really nice pond. So I grabbed it to use it as a pond, but 
it's just been used for a, um, a shelter for this drop saw because when it rains I just throw that over the top of this and uh, it's actually really cool I don't have to drag it inside every day and bring it out every day but um, there we go I found this at the dump this is my Makita LS1013 drop saw the only thing that was wrong with this is it was missing this press button that releases that trigger it was also this is broken this is probably the main reason they threw it out this is where the pin goes in, goes through that hole, and it holds this whole, you know, gantry down. But I've got around that by just using a belt off a washing machine. This belt here, wrapped it around the handle and that adjustment knob. So that's what we're going to use today to cut all of this framing pine. So I guess let's get cutting.
All done, finished. We got it all done. All everything's cut out, all the various sizes that we need. Um, yeah, so that's really cool. We actually made it. We got so much left over. Like, geez, that's great because we'll use that for um, different parts of the build and save ourselves some money. But there you go. So what I might do now is actually clean up a little bit. It looks like it's about to rain and you don't want sawdust and water mixing because you get really bad stains. So I'm going to clean up, take this inside all this timber and start screwing it to the joists.
I thought this is worth, you know, interrupting this video to show you. You may have just noticed I started using a couple of, couple of saber saws or reciprocating saws. Well, this yellow one that I was using initially, um, I found at the tip, I found this bag. It was just chock-a-block full of power tools. They were all DeWalt power tools as well, cordless ones, and they were full of batteries. I think there was about five or six batteries and there were two charges in there. And I'm pretty sure the main reason they threw them out um, was because most of the batteries had died. I think almost all batteries had died. Um, but, you know, I just did a, you know, use my head a bit and I grabbed a couple of paper clips and I actually, you know, gave each battery a bit of a bit of a charge using a couple of paper clips and another battery. And then I quickly threw them on the charger and it worked perfectly. 
all of them. I got, I think there was maybe one battery that didn't charge, but um, someone's thrown them out. I think they just wanted to upgrade anyway, because these, you know, um, DeWalt, um, these particular power tools, I think they're last generation, but who cares, you're right? I got just about every single power tool, including power saws and, uh, you know, um, impact drivers and so forth. But um, yeah, it, it didn't last long. The battery went flat pretty quick because I only just decided to use it and um, I pulled it out and started using it without charging the battery. So I think I got maybe 10 charges out of it. But I then after it went flat, I remembered that just recently I had found a powered one, which is a Trade Tools Direct one and it looks brand new. And someone threw that out as well. So I picked that one up there, that one there. I think that came from... I think that was at the e-waste section at one of the dumps that I go to. And um, yeah, I just picked it up and brought it home and it works great. And I've been wanting one for such a long time. So we've switched to this one, but um, I just thought that's worth a you know, bit of a story and, and let you know, but um, how cool is that? So yeah, they'd be basically in landfill at this stage, but we're using them to build my cinema.
Well, there we go, all finished. Oh man, that took so much longer than I thought it was gonna take, seriously. I thought this was gonna take maybe a day to kind of screw all of this off and nah, it took me more like two and a half days, it's crazy. I, I do work very slowly because I'm a perfectionist. Everything has to be level and straight and oh man, it really took a long time, uh, a lot longer than I thought. Um, I didn't intend to do these inner perimeter pieces that you know, span on the inner, inner perimeter here. I'm really happy I did. I'm stoked that I did. You probably saw me uh, with the, um, the saber saw lobbing off the ends of all of these pieces. And that was basically, we were lobbing off, you know, the thickness of this bit of frame so I could actually add that on. It was an afterthought, uh, but it does. It makes it so much more sturdy and solid. You could basically monkey bar your way around this cinema, I reckon, if you wanted to. Um, but let's not do that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm happy I did it. The, the downside is it's blown our budget out because I had to buy two 5.4 meter lengths. I already had the, the front and the back pieces, but the two, you know, 5.4 meter lengths cost me, I think, 50 bucks. So we're, we're out of pocket 50 bucks with this soffit framing. So that ain't too bad. Thank you everyone who dumps this stuff. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Okay, all right, so video two, what are we gonna be doing? So video two, we're gonna be doing this still. We're doing more Sofit stuff. We're just gonna be doing the front Sofit. It's not gonna be finished like that. We're gonna have a nice curved front. A lot of these cinemas that you see, they have these beautiful curves at the front. And I've always liked it, so that's what I wanna do. I have no idea how I'm gonna do it, but I think it will involve me doing it on the carpet and lifting it up. <laughs> so yeah, it's gonna be an interesting one. I really have no idea. But uh, let's leave that till the next video. Oh, and one thing that I meant to tell you guys is how did I determine the height of my sofa? 
meaning the distance from the ceiling to the underside of the sofa. How did I come up with that measurement? Well, I guess for everybody's cinema, it's going to be different. But for me, it all came down to that, you know, doorway that's going to be in, you know, up there leading into the corset showroom. Um, you can see there the floor is so much higher up there. So it really did. It, I just needed to make sure I had the head height to walk underneath that framing pine, uh, the sofa up there. And actually, before I grabbed a bit of MDF and I clamped it to the underside of that framing pine, and I walked through a bunch of times. I didn't even notice it. It was fantastic. There's probably 50 or 60 mil head height clearance. Uh, so for me personally, it's great. Anyone taller will have to duck. But hey, listen, it's not the main entrance. There are two other entrances that will be the main entrance and that ain't one of them. So for me, that's my secret entrance and it works out great. So I guess that's about it, guys. I'd like to say thank you for watching. I know it can be a little bit boring. I was bored actually editing some of this last night. And oh, man, I was bored. I was watching myself doing all of this stuff. But hey, listen, there's nobody else on YouTube that I've seen, you know, doing this kind of in-depth detail in cinema building. Um, yeah, most people will do it in 10 minutes or they'll build their cinema and they'll have a bit of footage and they'll stack together a you know 10 to 15 minutes worth of footage and time lapse it. And what do you get out of that? If you're a home cinema builder, if you want to do this yourself, you kind of, this would be gold. I knew, I know if I had found somebody on YouTube doing this, I would have been all over it. But um, there you go. Hopefully someone's going to find it valuable or inspiring. Um, yeah. Anyway, guys, uh, that's it for this one. You know, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.